today I want to talk to us, all of us, um, parents and children and all of us, anyone who is in church today, I want to speak to you today. And uh, I had given it a title, but after yesterday, I changed the title to the Family Values Challenge. And I want to do this challenge in, in 20 minutes, I'm at 30 minutes, so please stay awake. And, and listen to me, families. I know today we're doing uh, baby dedication and parents have brought their children and uh, most of you have come and I want to speak to all of us uh, today. We just began by reading uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Tunajua all of us together. Honor, honor your father and mother for this is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live along in the land and fathers, parents, listen, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Amen. So that is what we're going to do today. And I want to begin by just telling us, uh, Pastor Brian has shared this uh, briefly when he was praying, that the family is the smallest unit in the community, in the country. Uh, we agree that. Huh? Now, if all families fail, the community fail. Uh, the society fails, the country fails, and the whole world crumbles. And as of today, I want to give you some statistics. I don't have the exact numbers, but I want to give you uh, some of these statistics, and I want you to listen. Today, there are more young people in prison than ever before. We went to a committee the other, the other day, and we'll go to Langata Prison, and you'll see there are very young people in prison. Today, there are more divorce rates and broken families than any other time in history. And sadly, even among Christians, the numbers are very high. It is said that two out of four Christian marriages fail. That is a half. And one out of four, heathen, people do not know God. Just one out of four marriages fail. What are we not doing? Or what are we doing? We have more crime than, than ever before. Every day, as we watch the news, you will hear stories of murder, violence, I mean, robbery. People have been killed, thrown into septic tanks, blah, blah, blah. So many things that are happening. We have more drug and substance abuse more than anything. Squeeze kwa chai. You know, it is so much. And like I said, if all these things are happening, we will find ourselves at a very bad place. At the moment, as I speak, our country is on its knees as far as moral values are concerned. To mend a chini kabisa. Yani, we are moving from... One more thing. This is a very over-sexed uh, society and community. By the way, let me tell you, parents. I read an article the other day that at age 17, 17 years, the average teenage uh, boy or girl has had sex twice as much as their parents. You are you're shocked, eh? It is very true. Yani, parents, if you've been married for 40 years, imagine, calculate, I don't know, and multiply by two. That is your children. Overly sexed communities, abortions, teenage pregnancies, back to school orgies. We know all these things. We're moving from singing nice songs. Jesus loves the little children. Now we are singing Wamlambes. I've given you permission. <laughs> Those are our children. Very sad indeed. And I want us to wake up today. And we have to decide as a church, as families, that we are going to do something. We have to be very intentional. Are we together? And I want to first start by addressing parents. Then I will address the young people in this church. Parents, you have a lot of responsibilities. You have a lot to do. There's a quote here. Maybe if you can put the quote, uh, the quote there. Uh, uh, we can read together. It says, your children go out in the world every day. Whether it's your first day in school or uh, after you moved out to an, uh, another com community, the first time to complete a spelling uh, B or something like that. They, they take home experiences that I've gotten from the world. The next slide, please. Now, have they been, I want you to listen, answer that question. Have they been parented in a way 
that will cause them to go into the world feeling confident, special, and secure, and able to make wise decisions. Would you say as a parent, I have played my part, I have done my role? I want to share with us four things, parents, that you're supposed to do. And that through the help of God, tutafanya pamoja. The first thing I want to share with us today is number one, as parents, God has called you to train your children. Train your children. We assume, by the way, how many of us have dogs? We train dogs to do things, eh? And we assume our children cannot be trained. If, if we can train dogs to, you know, do all those things, we can also train our children. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Sisi kule pwani, yesterday nilikuwa mkalenjin, but today let me go to the coast. Sisi usema mtoto mleavyo, ndivyo wakuavyo. Yote tisa kumi ni kwamba samaki mkunje. Angali? Angali mbichi. You must teach your children to love God. To love God. I mean, and that has to start with you as a parent. Can your children see that you love, you love God? Can they see your commitment and your passion to God? Can they see, can they say confidently that my parents... My parents love God. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Bible says God gave uh, Moses the instructions to tell the children of Israel that these words of the Lord, they shall write them everywhere. On the doorposts, when they sit down, when they sleep, they shall remind them this, these instructions. Do we have Bible studies and, and, uh, and devotions at home? Do we pray with our children? Muslims are doing a very wonderful job at this. They are beaten for them to master these principles. And for us, what are we doing? We are just lazing around and hoping someday they will turn up to be a good person. Things don't just happen, parents. So teach them to love God. Teach them values. Teach them to love people, to respect people. Teach them to be content. Explain to them the importance of integrity. Teach them to love and serve God. Parents, I want you to teach your children to reason, not just to do things. As you tell them, do this, do this. Go beyond the actions and tell them why they are doing this. Tell them why it's important not to steal. Explain to them why how should we be people of integrity. Give reason. Not just tell them, go this, do that. Explain why are we doing this. Why do we not steal in school? Why, do we take, why don't we take pencils from our friends in school? Why are we not... Tell them the reasons why. The other thing, as parents, we must prepare our children for adulthood and for marriage. I'm reading a book right now, and uh, one of the favorite quotes for me at the moment in that book is, um, when opportunities come, it is too late to prepare. I'll say that again. When opportunities come, it is too late to prepare. Some of us parents think, ah, Niwadogo, uh, they're still far. And by the way, children grow up very fast nowadays. When we were growing up in our days, at six years, you are still crawling, you know. But nowadays, one year, you, are, you know how to use the remote, you know how to use everything. They are growing very fast. And don't assume, parents, that they are still young. They cannot understand. Prepare them for adulthood. Train them. Teach them these things. Show them how to choose a mate a husband or a wife, explain to them. And parents, I must say this as well. We must not be people who demonize and stereotype our tribes because our children will meet people from different tribes in this country. We must not tell them not to marry Luyas or Luos or Kikuyus for any other reason. We must not do that. That is not Christian. We must teach them skills, business, work, hard work, you know, I really envy Mr. Um, Morema, who is a good friend of mine. He has taught his children to work. They know how to do many things here in church, and they do a lot of things. If things need to be fixed, they do that. Please teach your children some skills. Teach them. If you are a businessman, teach your children business. If you're a farmer, please show them how to hold a gem and do something. Teach them to sacrifice and to know that they are not the only people in the world. 
they're growing up with entitlement. Mimi, Yangu, myself, my, and when they, are, they become MPs, it is about me, myself, and, and I. Teach them to solve problems and to be responsible. Teach them to, go, to see beyond today. Remind them that their actions have consequences. Please teach them to be different. They don't have to be the same with everyone. God has called them. Remind them that, parents. The second thing I want to tell you as parents is that you must leave an example for your children to follow. You know, as you teach them, there's a, a saying that says, monkey see, monkey do. Some of us parents tell our children to go to church. Tunabaki home to kiwacha for cinema. We send our children to Sunday school and us, we are home. And one of the largest responsibilities for you as a parent is that God has given you the responsibility to take care of the children and to set the kind of example that your children would want to follow. So be on the front line. As you tell them, let's go to church. Let them see you go to church. Be on the front line with the things of God. The other thing is this, accept mistakes. And if you have to apologize to your children, please do. Let me tell you a funny story. I was in class 7 many years ago. I cannot tell you. There's so many. We were in class and one of our teachers, please don't tell this to anyone, one of our teachers farted. And this is what he said. And we knew for sure he is the one. Sometimes parents, you will offend your children. The Bible says do not exasperate your children. You'll offend your children. You'll make them angry. Are you humble enough to go and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know how to do this. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Show them. Show them how to be humble. The other thing as an example, I want to speak to husbands and wives. We must model a good marriage for our children. They learn marriage from our homes. Sons learn how to treat wives from the way you fathers treat your, your, your wives. Ladies learn how to treat husbands from the way you women treat your husbands. If you speak harshly and uh, rudely to your husband, your daughter is, will most likely come home with a black eye because I'm a pig. You know? People say nowadays marriages are not working because our families are not working. We must teach our children, our sons and daughters, we must show them these things. Number three for parents, I want you to know that you should love your children unconditionally and spend time with your children. Love them and spend time with them. They are not anyone's children. They are your children. And God has given you those children. And as I speak, I want to realize that. I want to acknowledge that there could be people in this service who may not have biological children. I will tell you what you will do. And also, there could be people here who are maybe struggling to have a child. I will share this with us in a few. So please love and spend time with your children. Develop a relationship with your children so that you can have influence over their lives. Buenas for your son. Discipline your children. I mean, there's no love. There's no love without discipline. What kind of love is that? Not punish, but discipline. Show them that they have erred and show them the right way to go. Please provide care for your children and provide for their needs, parents. When it were deadbeats, eh? they do things and they run away. I hope in this church we don't have deadbeats. Shame on you if you are one. Tutakuombe na tukupake mafuta. Protect your children at home. And what they see, what they watch, what, who they interact with, please protect your children. Our children are exposed to pornography and sex at a very, very tender age. As a parent, you cannot afford to sit on your phone and chat the whole night as your children get to choose what channel to watch. Be the parent. You know, sometimes these homes, our children behave as if they are the parents and we are the children. Be the parent. Take ownership of the house. Have the authority to say what will be in your house. The other thing is know your children. Know your birth, their birthdays. Man, hallelujah. To pick you on home, my coffee, because from today, They'll remember their children's birthday. 
Which class are they in? What do they love doing? What skills do they have? Um, I mean, do they have girlfriends, boyfriends? Are they confident to come and tell you, uh, Dad, I want you to meet someone? Or you will hear from your neighbor. You know, do you have a relationship with them? I'll give you an example of my dad. I was very good in soccer. This is true. And um, that was in, I was in class eight. Um, I was very good, very good. And my father always discouraged me from playing soccer. I'll go on an MBA. You should study. We don't waste time. And that time in our school came sponsors from South Africa, and they were looking for young people to train and to pay school fees and, you know. And my dad said, no. And all the, I mean, it went like that. Naleo Nikipiga Mpire na Rudy Rivers. Because my dad did not develop my, my skills. He did not help me. Parents, if your child is gifted, please. And then we'll continue in that direction. In his own soccer and local music, whatever skill they have, please facilitate their growth. The other thing I want to say to parents, please know that children are unique and different people. Don't raise yourself in that child. Yeah. If you love, uh -huh, uh -huh. don't beat your children because they have loved. Hey, hey, hey. They are different. Please know they are different. They have a different mind. They are unique, and God has created them that way. So don't force them to be you. What else is They are very different people. Number four, the last thing, parents. Please support your children and live an inheritance for your children. Proverbs 12, 13, 22 says, A good man lives an inheritance with his children and children, but the sin as well is laid up with the righteous. And when I say inheritance, I don't just mean money and land and assets. Please leave behind a good name for your children. Some of us, when you're growing up, we first have to fix the mess that our parents did before we start building our names. Parents, please leave some favor, some good name for your children. Let your children go somewhere, and people will say, I knew your dad. He was a man of integrity. He did this to me. Let them, those services will really be helped. Senior. So leave behind a good name. If you're not for violence, for robbery, your children will not go anywhere. If they, I mean, if they go to school and their teacher knows you, most likely they will not be admitted to that school. Please leave behind a good name. That is an inheritance. Leave behind favor. Work hard, I mean, in your way you employ, work hard. Save up for your children. Invest in them. And I want you to say this, even as you support your children. Please, parents, appreciate that times have changed. We are no longer in the 1960s and 1930s. The way you think is not the way your children think. Truth is, some of our children know better than we know. Some things they know better than us. Please accept that they know better than you. Maybe you're thinking, I've not done all these things. It is too late for me. I want to tell you this. It is not too late for you parents. And for young people here, maybe you're saying, I am not a parent at the moment. I want you to know, I'll tell you this shortly. But for parents who are saying it, may not have children, or are trusting God for children. All of us, whether you like it or not, leave behind us. And so please find someone, a young person, you can work with, you can mentor someone. As a parent, be a parent. I am not, I don't have a child of my own, but I've been in the lives of very many young people. I have taught for four years in school and I acted as parents for those fathers, for those girls and boys whose fathers were very busy. They could not even, I mean, take initiative to grow their children. That said, I want to speak to the children. I'll face this direction. I know most of you are here. You may think all this mess is because of the parents. You have a part to play. And the first thing as a child, as a son or a daughter, and you have someone. And maybe I also appreciate the people here who do not have biological parents. Or me, you don't know your parents. I want you to find someone who will be an authority in your life and look at them as a parent. So the first thing for you children Obey your parents in the Lord. Please listen. Number one thing is, listen. You should listen. The Bible says, whoever loves discipline, loves knowledge, but who hates reproof is stupid. Proverbs 12, verse 1. 
Some of us young people behave like, you know, we know everything, even nothing. Please listen. Our son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Proverbs 13, 1. Proverbs 29, verse 1. He who is often reproved, yet stiffens his neck, will suddenly be broken beyond healing. We have a Kiswahili medali that says, um, I'm forgetting. Yes. Asiaskiela mku uvunjika gu. Please listen to those parents. There's a saying that, excuse me, um, an old man seated down can see further than a young man standing up. Just because, you know, they don't know what a Lamborghini is or what a Ferrari is, they don't know how to update Facebook status, does not mean they're stupid. They know things that you do not know. They have experience that you do not know. Please listen to them. The Bible says, so that it may go well with, with you. It will not go well with you if you dishonor your parents. God has bestowed on them blessings. And if you respect them and honor them, these blessings will be yours. I want to tell you, young people, if your parents are crying and weeping every day because of you, you are attracting a curse on your life. Please be very careful. Do not make them cry and mourn and weep every day because of you. Listen to them. The second thing for you is be kind and loving to your parents. You are very lucky you have parents. It is a blessing to have parents. Please do not take them for granted. The Bible says, Proverbs 9, 19, 26, He who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach. Young men who beat their mothers and call them names, shame on you. You should spend time with your parents, please. As you go for road trips and, and all those things, how, do you remember your parents? Do you remember them? I mean, pray for your parents. The other thing is this. Please understand they're not superhumans. They will make mistakes. They will wrong you. Do not live with bitterness. Forgive them if they did any wrong to you. Do not add any misery to them or any responsibility that, that are too weighty for them at this point. Surely if you get, a, if you get pregnant and for, at form two and your mother is 50 years old, what are you doing to that mother? Don't add misery to them. If you are arrested and thrown into the jail and they have to come and bail you out, please don't add them. Let them rest and retire in peace. Number three, please work hard and build your life and prepare for adulthood. As parents prepare you, please take the initiative to prepare yourself for the responsibilities of an adult, of parenting, of marriage. Some of us live blaming our parents. You're 32 and you're still saying, your mother did not do this, your mother, yet you have beards. Please grow up, take responsibility of your life. Amen. If they didn't take you to school, please work and take yourself to school. If they didn't show you how to do one, two, three, take initiative, learn from people. And if you don't have a parent, I said this, find someone who will be an authority in your life. The fourth thing for young people, please set a good example. We will make our parents proud if we leave behind a good name. Parents feel proud if they are associated with children with good morals. I mean, all of us at some point you are told in our lives, Ustembe na so and so. Amakua kama so and so. Parents value that and God wants you to do that. Leave a good name. Give them a good name. Set a good example. You know, I must say this. I love scientists. We have Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, and all those big names that, you know, they discovered something. And the young people today are behaving like they discovered sex. It was there even in, during Mau Mau and Maji Maji Rebellion. It was there. Sex was there. Please set a good example. Honor your parents. Honor your parents. The last thing for young people. You faithful children, you must remember to support. Support your parents. One as your son. You buy a shoe worth 20,000 and your parent does not have a shoe. Do you even know the shoe size of your parents? When was the last time you saw your parents? When was the last time you called them just to check on them? 
We have people who on Mother's Day they take a photo of their mother and post it. Yet isu siku zingine they don't care about that mama or that muse. Buy them a shoe. Look at them. Take them. Take good care of them. If possible, take them for lunch. Take them for holiday if you have the money. But you can do something. That is what I'm saying. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. You can do something to appreciate or to check on your parents. The other thing I must say is, children, please appreciate the struggles that your parents have gone through to raise you up. They work so hard. Sindio Wazazi. Yeah, agree with me, Sindio. Yes, you work so hard. Wahindi wa Nohatusi and your children here, they, they don't want to go to school. They are wasting your money. Please, shame on you if you're here and you are like that. Appreciate the struggles they've gone through. Some of them have, through, have been through pain and hell just to make sure you are you're like that. The way you are. Beautiful, nicely looking, educated. I appreciate their struggles. In a moment we'll be praying. And I want you to know everyone here in this church. Uh, Pastor Brown, you can, you can come. Um, we'll be, uh, it is our responsibility. The mess in this community, in this society, and as children, as parents, we are the ones who have messed up our community. And we can do something. And as we go to a time of prayer, I want us, number one, to pray. You can put up uh, the slide of, uh, on prayer points. Number one, I want us to pray for forgiveness. If you have a child whom or what is the correct English, who or whom you have had, please go to that child and as a parent, ask for forgiveness. Young people, if you have wronged your parents, you know somewhere, somehow you have caused misery to your parents. Please go and ask them for forgiveness. The other thing I want us to pray is that we children and the parents will know and love the Lord. So we'll pray. Parents, please pray for your children, that they will love the Lord, that they will know the Lord. Young people, please pray for your folks, that they will love the Lord and know him. The other thing is that we are praying for courage to do those hard things, those difficult things, to be different. Courage to stand out and be different. We are praying for wisdom, for grace to deal with difficult children, stubborn parents. And lastly, we will pray for protection. We will pray for long life, for blessings, and for prosperity of our parents and of our children. Mr. Brand.